I see people saying, oh, this looks just like portrait. I'm like, you're being so misled it right now, sadly. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Cameras and Coffee, episode two. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit different. I had my good friend Cam Mackey in town from California. He was shooting some stuff in Nashville, and I got him for a brief second to do a nice little episode of Cameras and Coffee. However, we recorded it in the car at nine o'clock at night while he was driving me to my car, so it's gonna look really bad. Hopefully it sounds okay. I haven't even listened to it. Uh, so yeah, visually, uh, it's not going to be that great, but the information's still good, so hopefully you can enjoy it for what it is. So yeah, enjoy this one. Cam's in town. Cam's in Nash. He is a, I was going to say a YouTuber, but I feel like you're more of a like fashion photographer. Yeah. Um, I, I don't feel like I've earned the right to be called a YouTuber yet. Yeah. So, okay, we'll say he's, he's a fashion photographer turned potential YouTuber. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Um, but... I felt like I had a unique opportunity to film this with him. I'm starting this new series called Cameras and Coffee. We don't got coffee. I just drank some sweet tea. We had barbecue. Yeah. It was awesome. It's, it's my fault. We're, it's, yeah. we're, I had Connor working this whole time I was out here, so. It was really fun, though. Time to, yeah, I'll be back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, we, we did this shoot with uh, uh, Cam's clients. It was really cool. Uh, kind of like a western-y, yet not western-y yeah. cowboy vibe. It was really cool. But I wanted to just take a few minutes and talk to Cam about, really, I wanted to ask you about film, right? Yeah. Because this is something that I have become more and more interested in, yeah. but I have zero experience on. Yeah. And I know you have a lot of opinions yeah. on, <laughs> right? Uh, so can you just explain to me kind of like the deal with getting the film look? Because that's something that I've been trying to acquire yeah that um and i feel like a lot of people are trying to acquire yeah a lot of it people think it's all about colors yeah it's not really about colors like portrait is the most popular film because it was the most natural color negative that you can get mm -hmm. like most realistic colors but so to look it's all about your curves oh your curves adjustment 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 yeah it's literally i made a little six pack of curve adjustments that i haven't shared with anyone yet because mm -hmm. they're that filmic wow it's all about the curve and the color science because of skin tones mm -hmm. film has the greatest skin tones it makes skin tones look better than real skin tones yeah. for some reason people put like on these teal and orange bluts and they're like this is filmic or this right. is cinema it's like none of that. and they just throw a ton of grain on it yeah the it's not about that at all right at all so a camera that you've been messing around with a lot is the Fujifilm, which you have the X100V. Yeah. Great camera. I'm not even holding the center That's right now. That's how obsessive I am with it. It's in my lap at all times. Yeah. <laughs> and you used this on a professional shoot just now. Yeah. It's on like crazy. three days of shooting. I right. used it every day and I favored it over my Canon R5. Right. Which I love to death. But this thing was just like always there. And yeah. it was just naturally when I'm working, especially with wearing gun stuff like this, like a lot of stuff's not planned. It's just whatever like my natural instinct is, is what I use. And that was going to this x one be which is mind blowing. Yeah, but it's interesting because we're, we're using JPEGs and you've gotten pretty close to that quote unquote film look. Yeah. Can we talk about the what you've thrown in front of your lens? Can yeah. we talk about that? So, one of my turn signals on, now that I'm on. Um, <laughs> So classic neg yeah. on these X trans four whatever sensors um, is freaking amazing. It softens the blacks a little bit. It pushes the greens a little bit more to a minty color, which uh, more Fujifilm stocks do. Uh, Kodak greens are a little bit more warmer. Yeah. Uh, Kodak Portra is actually a warmer type of film in general. Mm -hmm. uh, like the highlights have some warmth to them. And so the classic neg is has a lot of the film characteristics with the curve that they put on it um, but then they push the colors a little bit too much like fujifilm superior film has very magenta skin tones mm -hmm. like it's nasty i don't i really don't know why compared to, to portra's and theirs is like you either get the salmon colored skin tone or you get this warmer golden hue skin tone and so i pushed my tint to a more green color to get a warmer look out of it like portra but then the greens are too saturated on classic neg. So in order to filter that, I put a, um, it's a magenta filter. That I forgot what's the technical thing for it. Yeah, um, It's for it's, the light type. Oh, uh, I know. It's, I it's think the I, lights that do the purple cast, the, the bar Fluorescent. Lights. Fluorescent filter. That's it, yep. 
Um, and so basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to kind of trick the camera to thinking that the scene's very purple. It mm -hmm. naturally is killing the green hues being fed into the camera. So in return, I could push my tints really hard. It's like negative six think, and eight. Yeah, I think I peered through your settings. I think it's actually negative nine. Oh, see? Yeah. And so but basically what I'm doing is I'm able to push the whole image to a greener, warmer tint while not having those overly saturated uh, classic neg greens that yeah. it does. And if you guys want to see some of this work, I assume this is gonna some of this is gonna appear on your Instagram. Oh, uh, for sure. Yeah, over time because yeah. these I mean, photos are sick. The one of the clients she asked if I had photos the next morning after we were all partying till like four a.m. Yeah, later around like nine or ten, she goes, "Hey, do you have any photos I can use right now?" So I just dropped them from my phone from the Fuji, sent them straight to her, and they're already being posted from his uh, record label people. Oh, really? They're posting it, she's posting it, he's posting it all over their own Instagrams and everything. So I kind of wish I got to do like a little bit, like at least some retouching or something, but they, yeah. it's out there, straight from the X100V. Shots are being used for marketing material. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, because I've always kind of like thrown JPEGs as like the, it's like you, you never shoot it, you always yeah, shoot raw, you know? Same. But I think that like, Fujifilm kind of offers something that other camera manufacturers just don't have. Yeah. Right? But obviously if this was like a campaign, I wasn't shooting campaigns, this was for a music artist. Right. And uh, they love like the retro type stuff I do. So I this is why I was so obsessed about trying to find this camera before this trip, was for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got to use it on that and it paid off. Yeah. Like rarely do I feel like I'm ever like that right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it was perfect. Everyone loved it. I would show them the back of the camera and they're all blown away and like weirded out. They're like, wait, why, how's it look like that already? Right. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. Cam is uh, making, potentially, I'm assuming the video is going to go live, a video about like his experience using the X100B yeah. in Nashville. So if that video is live by the time, I will link it. Yeah. Uh, it's a great video. You should go check it out. But he was talking about how like, it's almost interesting. You could get in people's face with that camera and it almost wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't make them feel uncomfortable. Yeah, because you guys probably have been to conscious before. You guys see that there's usually someone there with a big DSLR and a big uh, speed light on top of their camera. Yeah. And it's kind of has like this cliche thing of like, oh, the cameraman's here to take a picture and we'll like get together. Right. On this though, everyone was like, there's no intimidation there. Are you cutting this up? Yeah. Okay. Not, or maybe not. Maybe That's whatever. It. I That's can do it. what I want. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or this is just like a really awkward, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's out there for five minutes, like not saying anything. Yeah. Talk about YouTubers' depression. Yeah, I don't want to touch on that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I know there's that Fuji X Weekly guy. Yeah. Which I've made videos on. Yeah, I love his recipes, um, but they don't look like the film sucks that they're supposed to. Right. And so I've always just been kind of bothered that people are like, oh, like this is like the portrait setting and this looks just like portrait. And it's like, it doesn't look just like portrait at all. So uh, some background on the film I've shoot, I've shot. Um, I have a Mamiya 645 AFD. I've had a handful of different Canon A1s and AE1s. Um, I've had some film point and shoot cameras. I've had the Mamiya RZ67. Mm -hmm. I had the Pentax 645N2. I think it was the two. I think there's two of that one. So yeah, I've shot a lot of film. I have a lot of friends that shoot a lot of film. Uh, that was the other thing we kind of will touch on a little bit. Sure. A lot of my professional photography friends, they're still rocking Canon 5D Mark IIs and IVs. Right. Uh, and they're, no one knows about them, but they're the ones that like when you go into PacSun and you see ads and stuff, that's them. If you right. see a billboard for like Billabong or something, that's them. If you right. see a friend of L Magazine or something, that's them. They're like, most of these working professionals are hidden. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of this like actual, like this is what portraits are supposed to look like. Right. And then, but then you have a bunch of people saying, no, this this looks like film. It's like, it doesn't look like film. It drives yeah. me crazy. I'm actually kind of curious about the Fuji X Weekly because I don't know that it's a guy because I, saw, I swear I saw in there once, it was like, it was titled Amy's like Fuji Superior or something. Oh. So I, I almost wonder if it's just like a community of people mm. can post recipes. I really don't know. I've found them re very recently. You can get some interesting looks. Like there's a few of them that I found that I enjoy. Yeah, they but, definitely look cool. But you're, you're right. They don't, they don't directly represent the yeah. film that they necessarily claim they do. Yeah. 
And I think it's fine that they label it that too, but I just get bothered when I see people saying, oh, this looks just like portrait. I'm like, you're being so misled right now, sadly. Yeah. Cut it. Cut it. Wait, one other thing I gotta touch on. Yeah. There's something weird going on with the sensor where it looks like it's like dodge and burning for you. Yeah. Like parts of the photo has like this beautiful contrast to it that's not natural, but it really pops off the image. I have no idea what that is. I have no clue, but right. freaking, it's like this mid, uh, mid range tonal contrast that it's doing. And it like makes it a little bit more crunchy and, and like film has this deep gamma to it. Gamma is usually just like your mids. And it, it kind of brings down the contrast while bringing down the colors while also saturating them a little bit um, while keeping the shadows safe. Like that's a hardcore film thing. Mm -hmm. And so this, I have the chroma effects turned on, so maybe that's what it is. Yeah. It might be that. It could be. Where you can see the highlights kind of popping off, but the colors are still deep, but the shadows are still there being yeah. recovered. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, listen, guys. Obviously, Cam. Cam's the real <laughs> deal. Like he, he's uh, he's an actual professional. So, like, if you have not seen Cam's YouTube channel, it's Cam Mackey, right, on YouTube. Um, I think. You think? <laughs> you don't even know. I'm don't pretty know. sure it's Cam Mackey. I'll link it in the description. But, dude, like, thanks so much for just yeah, having man. a casual conversation with me about yeah. about film and Fuji film and all that stuff. We love yeah. that stuff. So. Next time, yeah. I'm out here. I'll bring film. Okay. Ooh, can we? Yeah, I'm gonna do that video soon, actually. Okay. I'm gonna run actual roll portrait gold and uh, ultra max, and I'm gonna make simulations side by side to them. Okay, that'd be sick. Yeah. That's gonna be really cool. Okay, guys, definitely make sure you subscribe <laughs> so you can see that. No, yeah, yeah. subscribe to his channel so that you can see that. I ramble on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, anyways, guys, I hope that you have a fantastic day and I will see you whenever I make another video. Take it easy, guys.